Hello and welcome to today's video. What we have here is a cheap ass attenuator. I made it myself because I didn't want to buy something like an ox box or something else that costs, you know, $100 plus, $200 plus. Wanted to save some money. So I looked on the internet, found a diagram, just like I'm sure many of you have, and found the following. It's called an L pad. L pad is basically a potentiometer with certain resistance that goes between your speaker and your amplifier to act as a uh, attenuator. It works great with my 5E3 and my 50 watt crate and my 30 watt Ampeg. What it doesn't work great with is amps that you really need it for. Now those amps you know, they definitely benefit by having an attenuator. But this piece can go up to 140 watts. So what we're going to see today is what happens when you um, plug up this 100 watt rated 8 ohm L pad to a 100 watt head and we're going to see what we can do to fix it. Stay tuned. Okay, I have less Paul playing through this right now and what I'm gonna do is crank it I guess that's enough of that. So that's what happens when you hook a 100 watt head into a 100 watt rated attenuator. It starts burning up. Imagine if you did this for too long, uh, it could catch fire or melt if it's not already starting to melt. Okay, so the amp needs to see an 8 ohm load, and that's what this provides. But, it's 100 watts. Can we get an 8 ohm 200 watt L pad? Well, I've looked around. They don't seem to sell them anywhere. So, I think I've come up with a pretty cool solution. Alright, stick with me. And we're going to go check it out. Alright, so here's my design. Basically, it's just like the one that I have today. Except... It's got an extra, it's at 16 ohms this time, and there's an extra resistor, 16 ohms. Now when you run these two in parallel, you get 8 ohms. So it would see it as an 8 ohm load, which is what we need. Now these are mono jacks and the bright switch. So what I'm going to try to do is connect these two 100 watt resistors in parallel to create a 200 watt 8 ohm resistor. Now what I'm going to use is a Home Depot junction box that you can pick up for about three or four dollars. I'm going to use this, uh, I think it was $25 L pad. Okay, I'm going to use this 16 ohm 100 watt resistor, also inexpensive. I'm going to use my mono jacks and a small three-way switch and we will see what happens. Alright, let's take a look at this crude drawing. All right. Remember this is 16 ohms at 100 watts and this is also 16 ohm at 100 watts. This is what happens. There's a grounding scheme. Here's the ground. Now this is post down. 
post down, meaning it's upside down. So the left terminal here is your ground, and that's going to go to the ground sleeve, and then to the next ground sleeve. That's all there is to it. Not bad. Now let's take a look at how the signal comes in. It comes in, goes through the resistor terminal, goes down to this middle terminal, goes down from the middle terminal, through this switch, outside this switch, into the red wire, and then the red wire goes into the uh, resistor terminal, then it goes back to the L pad, and then it goes out. So that's what we're working on. Now I haven't explained what this switch is, but this switch is actually a bright switch. So we're going to experiment with some capacitor values and see what we get. The ones listed on the internet are way too low. If you find a schematic for this, don't expect those to work. I don't know why they chose those values, but I'll be using probably 30 microfarad and 100 microfarad. That's the, really the only way I can hear a difference. So we're going to try that um, and see how it goes. All right, so we've got our junction box over here. And it's uh, two bucks, two, 250. And then our plate, which is like a dollar. So this is going to be my layout here. Just making sure everything fits. The easiest way to do this is to kind of place it yourself and then measure the holes. Uh, the most important hole to measure is uh, this guy right here. So make sure you actually measure how far in the box that's going to be. So what I did was I placed it here and I took a measuring tape and I said okay it looks about 3 eighths but you know just to be safe I'm going to make it at a half inch and since it's a square it's going to be a half inch, half inch. And then I put my purple dot my plate at a half inch, half inch. After that, I put this on here so I could see roughly where it would stand. And I saw that I could put the jacks right here and right here without hitting anything. And I saw that I could put my resistor right here. And the switch is short enough to actually hover over the resistor. All right, we've got our holes drilled. One for the knob, and the jacks, and the switch. Now we're gonna put it together and see what we got. And hopefully there'll be enough clearance here. We'll see. All right, so you can see here, I've suspended the resistor in the air with a helping hand. If you want a helping hand like this, they're not expensive on Amazon. This one came with several arms, and it also came with an arm that holds a magnifying glass and a light. So it can be pretty helpful. I do recommend it. Uh, I don't know that I'd be able to do half the stuff without it. So, alright, time to wire it up. Not a steady hand. Not a steady hand. Okay, so it's time to test it out. All right, so this is it. Just to show you that it works. Okay, it works great. Now let's crank it up. it up all the way and now you recall that the other one was smoking
Okay, I put some capacitors in there. They are polarized capacitors, which you're not supposed to use. But I'm going to try them out anyway. One's 100 microfarad, one's 47 microfarad. And we're going to see if this gives us back some brightness. Now, I did this with 16 volt capacitors before that were non polarized and they exploded. And then I had very small um, ceramic capacitors that worked that were rated for high voltage. Uh, so I think what goes through this is like 22 volts. These are both rated for 50. So let's see if they explode um, or if they work to change the tone. And basically the idea is we want to keep it from robbing. We want to keep it from robbing the high end off. And that's what these capacitors should do. So. Ready? Listen to the difference. It's almost like a boost. So we got bright and extra bright. I'm honest with you. Yeah, I like the 100. Wow. There it is in its finished form in its Home Depot junction box. Thank you.